Yes. Oh, yeah, it's pretty bad. This is a pretty unique vehicle, because it does a lot of really interesting things. To better understand it, let's take a closer look at what a quad rotor biplane even is. A quad biplane is essentially just a quadcopter with two wings strapped to it. The only moving parts are the four brushless motors, which makes the vehicle incredibly simple and reliable. The vehicle can take off and hover and operate like a normal quadcopter, with the standard roll, pitch, and yaw axes of a quadcopter. In this mode, all the lift to keep the vehicle in the air is produced by the thrust from the motors, which can be very inefficient. However, the vehicle can then transition to forward flight by pitching the vehicle 90 degrees forward to fly like an airplane. Now, in forward flight, instead of all the lift being produced from the thrust of the motors, instead, the lift is produced by the wings, and all of the thrust from the motors is used to push the vehicle forward, which makes the vehicle much more efficient. Now, interestingly, the roll and yaw axes flip in forward flight, it still has the same maneuverability, but now, what was the yaw axis in hover turns into the roll axis in forward flight, and what was the roll axis in hover turns into the yaw axis in forward flight mode, but pitch remains the same in both modes. The vehicle can then transition back to hover and land like a standard quadcopter. Now, this project is funded by the Alfred Gazelle Rotorcraft Center here at the University of Maryland. This concept was first proven on a small scale version that weighed roughly 250 grams. We've since worked our way up to larger 8-pound vehicles that can deliver packages and even larger quad biplanes that weigh over 20 pounds. Now, this vehicle here is very similar to our research projects that we've done in the past. However, this one seeks to explore the advantages of using a variable wing geometry such as those of morphing winglets. And what's really great about a variable wing geometry is that you can basically change the way the aircraft flies based on what the mission requires. In this case, these morphing winglets provide three different advantages, and the first is aerodynamic performance. So here's the morphing winglet quad rotor biplane as defined by the lower wing, upper wing, and the winglet. Again, the only moving parts are the four brushless motors, but now we introduce two winglet mechanisms in order to independently actuate the winglets. Now, when the winglets are open, the total upper wingspan is roughly 2 meters, which allows for maximum lift and therefore the slowest forward flight speed. But we can also close the winglets into what we've dubbed box wing mode, and now the upper wingspan is only 1 meter, which allows the vehicle to travel at its maximum speed. Now, this can be very advantageous depending on your mission. If, for instance, you need to fly above something very slowly, you can do that with the winglets open, while also conserving energy. But now let's say you want to get somewhere much faster, you can close the winglets and sprint to that location as well. Even NASA is doing similar research by using morphing winglets to study the aerodynamic performance advantages on subsonic and supersonic aircraft. Now, the second feature these winglets can provide is roll control, and the idea with this is very similar to the lift differences in open and box wing mode. However, here we can change the winglet angle independently in order to produce a roll moment which could cause the vehicle to turn either to the left or to the right. The third feature these winglets can provide is stability. On small aircraft today, such as the one shown here, they have a slight dihedral angle to the wing, which allows the aircraft to be naturally stable and therefore much easier to fly for beginner pilots. Now, there are also aircraft such as fighter jets and the C-5 Galaxy shown here that have an anhedral wing. And the reason the engineers chose to do this is because a wing with a negative dihedral angle makes the aircraft naturally unstable. In this case, it's actually a good thing. Because the aircraft is so large, making it naturally unstable allows it to make sharper turns that it otherwise could not with a standard dihedral or flat wing. And the reason it is still able to fly, even though it is now naturally unstable, is because of the sophisticated aircraft control software that keeps it flying the way it should. So, coming back to this vehicle, it can have either a dihedral wing or an anhedral wing, 
depending on how maneuverable the vehicle needs to be in the mission that it is in. So the idea with the variable wing geometry, such as those of morphing winglets on this vehicle, is that we basically get away from designing one aircraft to be mission specific to one mission, and another aircraft to be mission specific to another mission. Instead, we can use one aircraft such as this to basically cover a wide variety of missions, but not do them quite as well as the perfectly designed mission specific aircraft. Now that you understand the concept behind the morphing winglets, let's go over how exactly the winglet mechanism works. Essentially, it uses a warm drive mechanism with a 10 to 1 gear ratio that is passively locked. A servo drives the worm, which then drives the worm gear, which then allows the winglet to move. And looking at an exploded view, we can get a good sense as to how the mechanism works. And before I show you what we've already learned from this vehicle, let's first watch it fly. Underneath the nose cone is where the flight data recorder is stored, and yes, it is very messy. This vehicle uses two custom ELCA boards for flight control, one that controls the vehicle and the other that rides along and acts as a middleman between the data collected and the Raspberry Pi, where the data is then stored on an SD card. This vehicle can collect many different types of data, primarily airspeed, power, motor RPM, all of the body angles, and pilot inputs. So here is a very encouraging plot of the data we've already collected. What it shows is the vehicle's power on the y-axis versus the forward flight airspeed on the x-axis. Again, boxwing mode is the vehicle's flight configuration when the winglets are closed, and open winglet mode is the vehicle's flight configuration when the winglets are open at a 20 degree dihedral angle. And so what we see is that as airspeed increases, the power decreases for both modes. But what's interesting here is that boxing mode tends to use more power for the same airspeed as open winglet mode, but boxing mode is capable of reaching a higher top speed because it does not produce as much lift as open winglet mode does. Now looking at a slightly different plot of the same data, we can take a look at the power difference between the two flight configurations. So again, we have airspeed on the x-axis, but now we have the power difference on the y-axis. Looking at this, we see that the flight configurations reach a maximum power difference of 100 watts, which means that the open winglet mode requires 30% less power than boxwing mode at 4 meters per second. Now, the story changes as the airspeed increases. Now the power difference between the two flight modes starts to drop, and it's very likely that boxwing mode will require less power compared to open winglet mode in the higher speed range. But further flight testing will need to be done in order to prove this. All in all, this data has already proven that a vehicle with morphing winglets can allow it to adapt to the mission that it is in, in order to achieve the least power draw. Clearly, there is a bunch more to be researched here, but if you'd like more information, you can reference my paper below, as well as find a bunch of links to things I've referenced in this video. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.